All right, folks. So one couple, one more thing we have to discuss. So we talked about adding, subtracting, and we talked about multiplying. Well, let's talk about dividing. Dividing um, is a bit interesting in that if I give you a problem such as three fourths, well, let's talk about multiplication for a moment. Three fourths times one half. We know what to do here. We just simply multiply across. And you end up with 3 over 8. Okay? Now, when you divide, the rules are different. If I were to instead say to you 3 fourths divided by 1 half. So, there's a couple of rules to consider when it comes to division. Okay? Rule 1 you don't divide the fractions. Okay? You'll see why in a moment. When you, rule two is you must invert the second fraction and multiply both fractions to get your answer. Helps if I spell that right, correct? And for rule number three, it's not so much a rule as in inverting the fraction is what we call the reciprocal. This is a new word I want you to remember. The reciprocal is simply inverting or flipping the fraction. So the way this works is as follows. If I see a problem, as so, where I'm being told solve this fraction and it says 3 fourths divided by 1 half, rule 1 is you don't divide the fractions. So I have to invert the second fraction and multiply both fractions to get my answer. So this is my second fraction. So this is the fraction that I am going to invert or do this the reciprocal. Okay, so I'm just going to flip it. Okay, so when I look at this, how do I rewrite this problem? Well, I'm going to simply rewrite it as 3 fourths times, again, make your bottom the top and make your top the bottom. Okay, that's the reciprocal right here. I just took the one half and I flipped it and made it two over one. So now it becomes an easy problem to solve. It's a multiplication problem. Multiply your terms across. So this becomes three times two over four times one, which becomes six over four. And I can reduce that further if I wanted to, but for the purposes of time, um, just know that when you're given a division problem, in this case, 3 fourths divided by 1 half, you don't divide it, you take the second fraction, invert it, or flip it, and you're going to multiply the problem across. With that, let's actually do another problem. Okay, so here's another problem. Oops, sorry, there we go, 2 fourths divided by one-fifth. Again, we can't divide fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this problem as two-fourths times. I'm going to take my second fraction and I'm going to do what? I'm going to invert it or do the reciprocal, which means I make the bottom the top and the top the bottom. So I end up with two-fourths times five over one. And I'm going to rewrite this problem as two-fifths or 2 times 5, I should say, over 4 times 1, which now when we multiply across, this becomes 10 over 4, which I can reduce down since they're both even, and both sides, I can divide both sides by 2, because whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. And when I divide 2 into 10, it becomes 5, and 2 goes into 4 twice, so I now end up with 
5 over 2 is my answer. So again, you don't divide fractions. What you do is you rewrite the problem as a multiplication problem and you take your second fraction and you flip it, or what we call the reciprocal, make the bottom the top and the top the bottom, and you multiply across accordingly. Okay, at this time I'd like for us to work as a group and you're going to solve the following three problems. So problem number one is to divide three-fourths divided by two-fifths. Number two will be two-fourths divided by one-half. And we're going to do problem number three, which will be five-tenths divided by, to make that very clear, it's divided by two-thirds. Okay, Professor Speck, please put this video on pause so the class can work on the problem. Okay, great. So at this time, let's solve this particular problem. So for the first problem, um, in this case, problem number one, again, remember that when you divide or total divide two fractions, you don't divide them. You have to rewrite the problem as a multiplication problem. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 fourths times. And I'm going to do the reciprocal of the second fraction, which means you make the bottom the top and the top the bottom or you invert it or flip it, whatever term you want to use. And we multiply across, so this becomes 3 times 5 over 4 times 2, which becomes, in this case, 15 over 8. And for our purposes, that is sufficient for our answer. For number 2, I'm going to rewrite this as a multiplication problem. Again, 2 fourths times, I'm going to take the second fraction, and I'm going to invert it, flip it or do the reciprocal so that this problem now becomes 4 over 4 which becomes 1 so you should have ended up with an answer of 1 last but not least I'm going to take my third problem 5 tenths divided by 2 thirds I'm going to rewrite this as a multiplication problem so I'm just going to simply re rewrite 5 tenths times I'm going to take the second fraction and I'm going to do the reciprocal, a.k.a. invert it, flip it, or just simply make the bottom the top, the top the bottom. So the 3 is now the top, the numerator, and 2 is the denominator. And I multiply accordingly, so it's 5 times 3 over 10 times 2, which becomes 15 over 20. And by the way, I can notice that these are both ending in 5 and zeros, which means that they are both divisible by 5. AKA I can divide both the top and the bottom by 5 and reduce this down to the lowest terms. I'm going to divide both sides by 5, which again, because again, remember, whatever you do to the top, you must do to the bottom. So 5 divided by 15 becomes 3, and 5 divided by 20 becomes 4, so that your ultimate answer is now three fourths. So these are the answers that you got. Great job. If not, again, remember that you must take your fractions, you must rewrite them as multiplication problems. Let me rephrase that. You must take any problem that you're given in terms of fractions that you're asked to divide, rewrite them as multiplication problems, take the second fraction and invert it, slash do the reciprocal, and multiply accordingly and reduce the lowest terms as appropriate. Okay, so now that we've talked about adding, multiplying, dividing, and subtracting fractions, let's get into converting fractions into numbers, or in this case, into, um, into decimals. So how do you do that? So if I give you a fraction of three halves, the rule that I want you to apply is as follows. So this is going to be a rule. And that is you divide the bottom into the top. Again, you divide the bottom into the top. So if I said convert 
three halves into a decimal, I can simply just take the bottom and divide it into the top. Again, I'm going to take the bottom and I'm going to divide it into the top, which is three. So when I divide two into three, it's not going to go in evenly, so I'm just going to do two times one is two, because that's the lowest number, because if I do two times two, it's four, that's too big. So I'm just going to simply subtract three from two to get one. Now, typically, what most of you are familiar with is that you can rewrite this as either one remainder one, or some of you may have seen in other classes where you would rewrite this as one and one half. But that's not what we're looking for. What we need to do is how do we take a fraction and convert it into a decimal? So here's how you do that. First and foremost, let's clear up some space here so that we can actually solve um, this problem because there are some quick guidelines that we need to consider. First and foremost, if we're going to convert this into a decimal, here's the rule. The rule is, is that when you divide a number into the top and you end up with a remainder, we don't just stop there. We're going to keep going. And the reason is, is that I'm going to now add right here a decimal point. Why? Because now anything after this number, first of all, there's no other number here. This is the only number that's available. So anything after that is going to be after the decimal point. Okay? Now what does that mean? Let's look at basic math. If I look at my place value, so I have my ones place. And if you're familiar with place value, you know that there's ones, tens, hundreds, and then it goes into thousands, ten thousands, etc. So if I had a number 34, the number 34 could be split like this, where we know that the fours in the ones place and three is tens in the tens place. For this example though, I want to point out the fact that we're not even working with double digit numbers. We're working with a single number. Because when I divide two into three, the only answer that I get is one number, and that is the number one. Well then, what happens after that? Well, after that, there's a spot here where we have our decimal point. And anything after the decimal point, we start to see other values, such as tenths, hundredths, thousandths, etc. So if I were to keep adding the value, so anything after the value, or after the decimal point, becomes 1.00, for example, and that could be represented as the one is in the ones place, the zero is after the decimal point, so it becomes a tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, etc. What you're really noting is that you have the word nths, THS, at the end of every single word after the decimal point, which denotes the fact that these are numbers after the decimal point. So if I look at 2 divided by 3, what happens here is I now have to add a decimal point because anything after this one, I'm going to start adding zeros. And the moment you start adding zeros, well, we're now going into a new set of place value, and that is a tenths and hundredths. So when I add a zero, because I'm going to keep going, I can now note the fact that 2 times 5 is 10, so this becomes... 10 minus 10, which is 0. So ultimately, the answer that I end up with is 1 fifth. Excuse me, that's incorrect. It's actually 1.5, which can be represented as 1 and 5 tenths. So let's actually do another example on the next video so you can understand this concept further.